Yeah. So we are going to do the station of metabolic syndrome with Dr. Sadia. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's start one. Let's say that my name is Michelle. Michelle, I'm, yeah. I'm yeah. a female patient who is going to consult you about the metabolic syndrome. One, two, three, go. Uh, hello, Ms. Michelle. Hello, Dr. Uh, I am Dr. Hassan, oh. one of the doctor, uh, one of the doctor in the yeah, mental I'm health well. unit. Uh, I understand from the notes that you you want to, to talk with me about the investigation uh, about the your uh, your investigation result, and I am here to help you. Well, doctor, I don't know. They said that uh, there are some uh, lab tests which I have done, and I've been asked to talk with you actually about them. I don't know what are the results of the uh, lab tests. Yeah, yeah, I understand your concern, Miss uh, Miss Michelle. Uh, but uh, I want to, to reassure you, we are all here to help you. Uh, your routine, your routine investigation uh, at this uh, time shows that there is uh, uh, sub uh, abnormalities in your investigation and the assessment. Yeah, that uh, shows that uh, your uh, blood glucose level it is increased uh, to some extent, and also the blood lipid. And uh, also the measurement of the blood pressure show uh, some increase. And also there is an increase in your waist circumference. Is it clear, Ms. Michelle? Yeah, he, yes. What could be the reason behind the, this, uh, these results, doctor? Yeah. Uh, Ms. Michelle, you experience what is called the metabolic syndrome. Have you ever heard about this uh, before? No. What is it, please, doctor? Yeah, in this uh, metabolic syndrome, there is a disturbance in the body, in the metabolism of the body, and this is may lead to the uh, to the disturbance in the blood chemistry, which may lead to increase of some uh, uh, substance in the blood, like glucose, like sugar and uh, uh, lipid, and also decrease uh, the the consumption of the energy by the body, and this is mainly to uh, increase of the blood pressure and uh, to to increase the uh, weight gain. Is, it, uh, is it serious, doctor? Is it serious? Yeah, uh, unfortunately, if it is not managed, uh, may lead to the complication like uh, uh, diabetes, diabetes, hypertension, and heart uh, and heart problem. But the good news, Ms. Michelle, that we will uh, detect your condition early, and we will start you in the management early. So what could be the reason for this metabolic syndrome? Why do I have metabolic syndrome? Is there is there many reasons uh, lead to this uh, metabolic syndrome? Uh, one of these uh, factors uh, occur as a side effect of the some medication like this clozapine, uh, but also there is a many factor uh, that may uh, which which it is lead to the unhealthy lifestyle. Uh, to detect this uh, factor, I, I would like to to know more about, uh, know information about your life uh, to help okay. you in the best way. Is it okay? No, no problem. Yeah. Uh, can you tell me what, ki what is kind of the, uh, of, the, of the food that you take every day? I'm not very keen to take uh, healthy food. You know, I just, I like uh, sweet, sweeteners and, and uh, visit drinks, cakes, you know, bakery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about the physical activities, uh, Miss Michelle? No, I, I, I don't do any physical activities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In underlying uh, medical problem? No, not as far as I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I know from the notes that you are uh, in the you ha you diagnosed as resistant schizophrenia. Are you take uh, your medication regularly? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you use alcohol? No. Yeah, sorry for, uh, I, I want to ask a sensitive question. Uh, do, do you use any recreational drug? No, no, no. What about the secret smoking? No, no. Yeah, I am worried about you. Uh, did you have any, uh, any thought to harm yourself? No, no, no. Yeah. Okay, yeah, doctor. Yeah. So how how can we sort out the problem of this metabolic syndrome? Yeah, this metabolic syndrome. Uh, we were the the backbone 
uh, of the management of this metabolic syndrome, it is uh, to con to uh, trans to uh, to uh, control your uh, your uh, lifestyle by changing it to the healthy lifestyle. Yeah, uh, Miss uh, Miss Michelle, we are here work as the uh, one unit, uh, one team, as a multidisciplinary team. We will uh, uh, we will cover all your needs physically, psychologically, and socially. Uh, the first thing I wanted to to know uh, to to tell you that we will uh, we will treat you in the in the form, but we will follow you regularly in the clinic, and we will do for you some blood tests and heart tracing to make the, to make sure that you are fit to take the medication and uh, to to make some uh, physical activities. And uh, the the backbone it is uh, as I mentioned before the healthy lifestyle. Yeah. Uh, for that, right. we, we how how do you feel about contact a dietitian to control your uh, your uh, your diet? No problem. No problem. Yeah. Also, we, also you need to uh, to uh, to join a gym. Is it okay to you? In no problem. No problem. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and about your uh, and about your uh, medication, uh, I know that uh, this colazapine it is uh, not recommended to to change because it is uh, uh, control your condition. Uh, okay. but, but we wait we wait to see the effect of this uh, health lifestyle. If uh, not, uh, uh, if not uh, make any improvement, then we will uh, add to your medication other. Uh, Medication called the uh, aripiprazole that uh, decreases uh, the 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 occurrence of this uh, metabolic disorder. Is it okay? No problem. No problem. Yeah, yeah. Any other question, uh, Miss Michelle? No, thank you. Yeah, thank you for uh, discuss with me, Miss Michelle. I will give you a leaflet about all what we have discussed, and don't hesitate to contact us if you have any concern. Okay, thank you so much. How do you feel about what you did? Give me your feedback about what you did. This will help you to understand yeah. your performance primarily. Uh, I am I am very distressed, doctor. I am uh, anxious. Yes, very anxious. I can see it because it is the first time for you. It yeah. is the first time, yeah. yeah. I see that you have prepared well, but your anxiety is reflected on your performance. Uh, it yeah. needed. Well, the good news is that it is not that bad. The, being anxious is not bad. Just it's a driving force. You yeah. can, uh, con we will control it when you practice this station uh, several times. With time, you'll feel that this station is familiar yeah. to you and your, your, your anxiety will decrease. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. uh, can you give her some feedback, please? Okay, can I go next? Yes, Dr. Alison. Uh, Dr. Rodaina is your friend. Doctors, please, can you just mute your mics? Mute your mics, please. Okay, so let's see. I'll just give you a rapid feedback now. The first thing, doctor, you know, um, you know, uh, first impression persists. Very important to uh, know how to introduce yourself. Your introduction was not good, and there is a simple rule for the introduction. You identify yourself. You greet the patient, or you greet the patient, and then identify yourself, and then explain for him or her why you are talking with him. Why you are talking with him. Uh, for example, hello, Mr. X. I'm Dr. Ibrahim from the Mental Health Unit. I've gathered from us that you want to talk with me about some of the blood tests. Yeah, that's it. Simple as this. But it must be assertive, clear. But in the very first beginning, you felt that you were struggling and stuttering just to introduce yourself and start the conversation. Um, pay attention to the language. I know that this is not an English uh, test, however. In the mark sheet, there are some, there is, I think, two points for the language. And, and two points from 12 points is, are, are considerable magnitude in the assessment. Uh, so pay attention to the language. Uh, your management uh, was not very organized. We did not talk about the investigations. Okay, so let's see how can we do this station according to our... Uh, it will be helpful always, doctors, to refresh your memory by some, uh, you know, some just, just uh, educational images to help you to understand the topic which you are going to do the station about. This will make you more confident when you are doing the station because you are doing something which, you know, 
Okay. I don't recommend that you go to through textbooks. Just refresh your memory with something uh, rapidly to grasp. Okay, so let's see how we can do this station. As you can see, the, the, the management plan or a management task, uh, or it is now they don't say it, uh, they say address the concerns. So, but it is a management task. So it is a built up uh, process. So you introduce yourself and then exp explain what is the problem. And then you gather some information which will help you to do the formulation and then the management. Having said this, can you do formulation for me, please, doctor? Can you formulate the 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 the, the, story, the story of this patient? Yeah, yeah, doctor. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, please formulate, please. Yeah, 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 yeah. Miss Michelle, from our uh, discussion and assessment, it seems that um, uh, I, I, I. Uh, I, uh, you, you, you diagnose and you diagnosed before that you, you diagnosed as a resistant schizophrenia, which it is controllable by the medication for the pain. Uh, uh, and the otherwise you experience a metabolic disorder uh, on the background that there is uh, no any underlying uh, medical problem. Is it okay? Okay, so let's see how we can do a formulation. There is a simple rule for the formulation. Now you want to do the first thing is it's called the S bar technique. You want to state the first thing, the situation, and then the background, and then do your assessment and recommendation. However, because of the time management, you will not going to talk about the assessment and the recommendation. We're going to discuss the assessment and recommendation later on in the management steps. But it is enough to show that you are able to do the formulation, but just mentioning what is the main psychological problem, what is the level of risk, and all the information you know in the background or you need to know. For example, in this station, Mrs. X, you have schizophrenia and you are on clozapine. pain. However, you have developed a metabolic syndrome and this carries high risk on your physical health particularly heart problems and blood vessel problems. All this on the background that you are not doing enough activities, okay, you don't have any other comorbid medical problems, okay, and you are well controlled regarding your psychological state. So this is what I did. I just formulated the problem for the patient, help him to understand what is going on. This is called formulation. I picked up the most important points in the story, which uh, are related to the diagnosis and the problem and what I'm going to do, or what I'm going to focus on. It is a skill, it needs some practice. And we will see in the mark sheet that this is the very first point which you are going to be scored for. And not only this, uh, I've just shared before in the group that they did some sort of an article or uh, and they asked the uh, examiners why the candidates find the management station difficult. Uh, and the first reason was because the candidates are not able to formulate. Formulation is a clinical skill. It needs to be practiced and I hope that you focus on it because those who are able to formulate have a better chance to pass. Okay, so back again to our station. Um, metabolic syndrome. Okay. As you can see, the first thing you introduce yourself, we have talked about the introduction. It is a very important part in the uh, in in your in, in any station. It is very simple, but do not underestimate it. It needs practice. Simple rule: identify yourself, greet the patient, and explain why you are talking with him or her, and then explain the findings of the uh, uh, lab results. Okay, and you did it well. And then part of the explanation that she's going to ask you about why she is having these abnormal blood tests. And it's very important to be ready with a simple explanation for the metabolic, metabolic syndrome. It is a disturbance in the metabolism of the body which causes changes in the blood chemistry like increased blood sugars and increased blood lipids. Also, there's a change in the energy consumption, which causes increased weight, increased waist circumference, and high blood pressure. 
many candidates just forget that there's also a change in the energy consumption and that's why there is increased weight and increased uh, circumference, waist circumference and blood pressure. You just focus on the changes in the blood chemistry. Okay, so this is the complete definition in simple words. Is it serious? Very important to mention that it has complications on the blood, uh, on the uh, serious complications. And, and actually, no, it is not that uncommon. Any one of you who's dealing with patients who are taking clozapine and olanzapine, very common to find them overweight or even morbidly obese. And, and, and I have to, one patient who have passed away because of this uh, obesity. Uh, okay, so. And then don't go through the management or the formulation before gathering some information which will help you to set the appropriate management plan and also will give the impression for the examiner that you are a, 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 a doctor who is, you know, is, who is looking at the patient in a comprehensive manner. So you want way. So you want to know more information about his or her social life. You want to know more about the psychological problem if she's taking her medications. Uh, if she is uh, having any symptoms, you want to know more about the level of risk. Very important to ask about the risk. And one might ask, so why should I ask about the risk in this station? It is a metabolic syndrome because in the mark sheet, there is a point for the risk. And this is something which they can not pay attention to. They expect from you to show that you are a safe practitioner and the risk is always in your mind and you are keen to make sure that the patient is safe. So there is a, po a point for the risk in this uh, in the mark sheet. So the candidates who are going to ask about the risk, other candidates are more uh, prone, most probably will pass, okay? The formulation we have discussed it. So again, we have mentioned the step-wise approach. You introduce yourself, you explain the results and answer the questions. And before going through the formulation or the management, make sure that you cover the biopsychosocial information and the risk of the patient. And then you do the formulation and then you do your management. And when you reach the management or when you talk about how you are going to sort out this problem, pay attention to the following. Most probably you will have not more than two minutes, maybe even less, uh, 90 seconds. So you must be very organized when you reach this point in order to make sure that you are going to cover most or even all the points which she needed to be covered, okay? So the first thing which you always do when you do the management or talk about the management is, what are you, you, Dr. Sardinia, any of you, Dr. Omar, Anas, what are you going to do and where the patient is going to be treated? So I will follow you up regularly in the clinic to address your concerns and do thorough physical and mental assessment, okay? And then there must be some sort of investigation. Definitely you need to do more investigations to make sure that this lady is fit. So you want to make sure that fit for physical activities. So you want to do some liver functions, kidney function, heart tracing. So if they are done, you are going to uh, revisit them or if they are not done, you are going to uh, do it. Are you with me all so far? Okay. Okay, so the first step is where the patient is going to be treated and what are you going to do? Number two, the investigations. Number three, don't forget this sentence. There will be a team which will cover all your needs physically, psychologically, and socially. And under each heading of physical, psychological, and social headings, you're going to put some words. So physically, you are going to discuss her condition with the GP to control the blood sugar level and lipid uh, and high lipids. And he's going to follow uh, their levels uh, regularly. As for the high blood pressure, there must be persistent, must show that you know what you are saying. You just don't go through controlling the blood pressure because of a single reading. We know that there must be persistent high blood pressure before adding a blood pressure lowering agent. Okay, so this is regarding the physical, psychological. Okay, you must say it clearly, Dr. Sadeya, that it is not recommended to change clozapine because of metabolic syndrome. However, if the metabolic syndrome was not controlled, we might add aripiprazole 
okay, which will help in controlling the metabolic syndrome. Last but not least, the backbone in the treatment is the healthy lifestyle, and here it is the social part of the management. You can help her, him or her by joining a subsidized gym. Okay, a subsidized, it is some sort of gyms in the UK which are some sort of, with some sort of discount for the NHS uh, patients. Okay, and to also be helpful to book an appointment with a dietitian. And if she mentions in her social life that she is taking drugs or she needs the alcohol and substance use service, add the sentence that, how do you feel about having an appointment with alcohol and substance use service? And the last point that you are going to give her leaflets about what you have discussed. And as you can see, this is the stepwise approach you must of talking about the management in the last 90 seconds. The issue is that because of the anxiety, which the candidates have, they struggle in the last 90 seconds. So you must be ready to be very organized and know what you are going to do in a stepwise approach in order to make sure that you will cover the management plan in not more than 90 seconds. If you have two minutes, that's good, but most probably it will be around 90 seconds. Okay, so let's see the mark sheet. And always make sure that your reference in your performance, whenever you are revising with your colleague or with a tutor, your reference is with the uh, will be the mark sheet. And as you can see in the mark sheet, that the candidate, if he uh, formulates properly or no. So as you can see here, you cannot say that Dr. Sadia formulated the station. So this point might be lost, or it will be lost fails to recognize significance of finding the results. No, she did find uh, recognize the significance of finding the results. Adequate management plan that reflects knowledge. Unfortunately, it was very disorganized. We didn't talk about the Arabic result as far as I remember. We did not talk about further investigations. So unfortunately, this, at this point might not be scored for you. Uh, does not pay sufficient attention to the patient health view. So I felt that you were having this uh, sort of collaborative approach. You were not lecturing. So this point will be scored for you. Pay attention to this point. Does not develop adequate risk management plan. So that's why you must ask for the risk even in this stage. So the candidates who will ask about the risk, definitely they will score this point. The candidates who feel that this is a metabolic syndrome, why am I going to ask about the risk? Most probably they will not score this point. Does not identify appropriate psychological and social intervention, you did. Now, it was not very organized. It was, well, it was not formalic, but because you were anxious, very anxious, you might not score for 0.9, so you, 0.7 and 9 will not be scored for you because of your anxiety. Your listening skill was good, but because of your language also, 0.11 and 12 might not be scored for you. This is not a pass or fail, doctor. Just to help you understand the importance of the mark sheet and also to understand how to use it. I hope you find it helpful, Dr. Saadir. Well done, doctor. Don't be frustrated from the feedback. This is to help you to improve your performance. Thank you. Okay, so who would like to Thank go? You. Dr. Anas, I think. Yeah. You. Thank you, Doctor. You are welcome. I think Dr. Anas is the one who wanted to do the station. Okay. Yes, Doctor. Yes, Dr. Anas. So what is the station she wants to uh, do? Uh, elderly uh, mania. Old age mania management. Okay. Elderly mania. Just give me just one minute to take it out for you. Okay. What is a uh, patient name? Mr. Brown. And you are going to Brown. talk to his uh, son, Michael. Michael and it's Mr. Brown. <clears throat> OK, 
Okay, Dr. Bijal, you'll go after Dr. Okay. I am ready. Uh, good, very good. One, two, three, go. Hello, Mr. Michael. I am Dr. Anas from Mental Health Unit. Hello, doctor. I understand. I understand that you have some concern regarding your father, Mr. Brown, right? Yes, that I'm very concerned about what has been, uh, what is wrong with my father. Uh, they said that you talked with him, and I want to know the diagnosis. And how we can? Help. I I can um, I can see how much you are worried. Rest, rest assured, uh, we will do our best to helping Mr. Brown and the family. Uh, before going through how we could helping him, uh, I need to ask you uh, some question about your understanding so far about his condition. What do you What do you understand so far? Well, he has changed in the past two weeks. I don't know what's going on with him. So started to, you know, not sleeping, spending too much money. Um, and he nearly he blanked his account and he wants to do, you know, totally ridiculous projects. And he's very yeah. agitated and, and he's driving rapidly. Uh, we took from him the car and he's starting now to speed with the tractor in the uh, streets of the village. Yes, yes, it, it's so difficult and concerning, especially driving and the choice that you stop making him from driving a car. So uh, uh, other than this, did you recognize if he used any uh, alcohol more or any substance? No, 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 no. I, I, he's not the man who does this. I don't... Yes. Uh, and if he has any medical problem, should be aware? No, no, no. He doesn't have any medical problems. And I, I understand this is the first time to uh, talk with psychiatry, right? Yes, yes. Is it the first time? No. Mm. Okay, th thank you for, uh, for this information. Um, what, what we find after we uh, talk with him and assess him, we find that he has something we called mania. Uh, uh, did you hear about this before? No, what is this uh, mania? Mania is a mood disorder characteristic by something like what you uh, told. It's related mood, uh, less sleep, uh, racing thoughts, and the poor judgment that lead him to spending unwise uh, spending of the money and uh, driving fast, as you mentioned. So all these symptoms yeah. we can call is uh, a mania. What could be the reason for this? Uh, actually, there are no specific fact. There are no specific reason, but there are factors could be related, uh, 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 like uh, stress, uh, stressful uh, life, could uh, lead to uh, chemical changes in uh, his brain. So uh, that lead to uh, a bearing of mental health problem. His mental health. Okay. Yeah, so uh, you get the point? could it be could it be an acute confusion? Uh, we we think we uh, first did investigation to rule out uh, if he has any 
uh, organic problem or is, uh, like acute confusion or any medical problem, but uh, the result of investigation show normal. So uh, and so now we uh, we think that he is uh, has this mental health problem. Well, uh, uh, well, can I sign a consent on his behalf to admit him? I feel that we cannot control. Uh, uh, actually, uh, you, you, uh, we need to talk with him uh, first uh, to tell him uh, to explain to him the diagnosis and to tell him if we uh, need uh, that we need to admit him. Um, if he refuses, as you mentioned, you suspect. We, we could uh, go for Mental Health Act as uh, a best of interest to deal with them. No how, need to sign. Yeah. How are you going to help him then? Okay, so to recap what we talk, he, uh, Mr. Brown has uh, a mania. Okay, and this is uh, first time mania. Uh, this uh, at that carry high, high risk for him uh, need to be treated. All that in background of he don't have any past psychiatric history or past medical history, uh, and we he don't use any uh, substance. So, um, so after we we talking with him, we need to do uh, uh, some more investigation to make sure other investig uh, other investigation to uh, make sure that he is uh, suitable for the treatment, and uh, to rule out. Uh, any drug, we need to do a urine drug screen to make sure that he didn't take any uh, substance. Yes. Follow me so far? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, after uh, that, we can start by medication uh, like uh, called benzodiazepine, short course benzodiazepine, helping him to uh, calm down and to sleep. Uh, I, I, until starting other medication that we used for uh, uh, mania, it's called one, one minute, stabilizer. One minute, it will, one stabilize. Minute. It will stabilize his mood. So uh, the backbone treatment for his, med uh, his medication is called mood stabilizer. We have different options. We can give you leaflet about these options, uh, like valbrate and lithium and, uh, and coitabine. So we can give you leaflet about this medication to read more about side effects that could happen. Are there any medications yeah. which should not be given? Uh, yeah, and, uh, yeah, we execute in old age to give um, olanzabine. Uh, it's not uh, recommended to give him olanzabine in that age. So uh, we, we, uh, we will take care about that. Um, other, other than this, after stabilization of his condition by medication, uh, uh, discharging, after discharging him, we can follow him uh, during, uh, at home and to make sure that he using the medication and uh, uh, to fine, follow fine. up. In. How do you feel about what you did? Very good, by the way. Okay. How do you feel about what you did? Give him some feedback, please, doctor. Give him feedback. I don't know. Uh, regarding risk, uh, uh, I felt that you already mentioned the risk, so that's why I didn't assess well, the, the risk. This, that who, who is uh, the clever one on the iPhone? Yes, he, he did not cover the etiological factors uh, adequately. Yeah, he's very clever. Just tell us what is your name. Very clever. So, what is the, give us your feedback? Yeah, yeah continue, Dr. <laughs> Andy. Uh, etiological factor, I asked about medical condition and the substance, mm. right? Yes. Uh, if he used substance and if he has any medical problem, should be aware. I don't know what else other than this. Okay. So I give you rapidly my, please, doctor, pay attention. Your introduction was good. That needs to be a bit improved. Uh, when you ask about the why psychosocial, you should have asked about the memory, whether he has any memory problems. Many times the frontal lobe the dementia is presented with a picture which is very close to the manic picture. Very close. 
And it is the start of the uh, a frontal lobe dementia. When I ask you why it is not a confusion, you talked about the investigation, which include confusion not by investigation, but, but by the clinical picture. So if the patient is oriented to the person, place, and time, this is not a case of confusion. Okay, confusion is primarily a medical problem. Yes, but we judge it by the clinical presentation. If there is an impairment in the, in the orientation, there is confusion. If there is orientation, there is no confusion. Um, before talking about when I ask you, uh, how are you going to help my father? So you wanted to formulate, choose the appropriate sign posting. Otherwise you will be uh, appearing as if you are not ask, answering my question and you are uh, having your own agenda. So when I ask you, how are you going to uh, to uh, help my father? You said that we, we are going to recap. No, there is a better sign posting which will help to give an impression that you are answering my question. You can say that before going through how we can help my fa your father, we are going to focus on the most important points in his condition, which we are going to, uh, the most important points which we are going to focus on in his condition, okay? Yes. Okay, very clever, Dr. Imam. We missed you. So let's see, uh, according to the... Uh... Okay, Bismillah. Bismillah. So again, your know, introduction, very important, doctors, to pay attention to the introduction. As you can see, the plan for the management is very simple. You introduce yourself, you gather a biopsychosocial information or, and then do the explanation or vice versa. Okay, but make sure that you do this, not before, not after the formulation. So according to the flow of the discussion, either you start by gathering the information or you start by explanation. When do you start by explanation? If the role player started to ask questions which needs to be explained to which needs some explanation so you start by explanation and then you gather the biopsychosocial information then you do your formulation and this then management these are the five yeah. steps for the management plan very simple in order to make sure that you perform this difficult task adequately Okay, so introduce yourself, then you gather the biopsychosocial information. You want to know some information to help you to come up with the right diagnosis. So you want to make sure that if he is not disoriented, okay, uh, th th this is a question here, which will help you to answer the question if he is not, uh, if he is confused or not, okay? We know so far that he is, there is no underlying medical condition. But I'm wondering, is the first time for him to be in contact with psychiatric services, ask about the orientation, ask about the memory problems here, as you can see. Very important to ask about the memory problems to make sure that this man does not have any uh, dementia problems and if there is any use of recreation drugs. Ask about the social circumstances and the risk, if there are any concerns about the risk, something which you didn't do. Make sure, doctors, uh, that you ask about, did you ask about the risk? Uh, uh, did you I ask me clearly it. about concerns about his safety? I did not uh, mm. No, no, because, no, uh, no, no, sir. So even if I said something which raised concerns about, you don't get sufficed by this, so tell me more, this is interesting. So I know that I talked about driving fast or spending money. Yeah. So you must yeah. comment on it. So is this interesting? Are there any other concerns about the safety which you would like uh, to raise? Show that yes. you are a safe practitioner and that you are keen to make sure that the risk is covered in your patient. Okay? Mm -hmm. yes. And yes. then you start going through the explanation, which you are going to explain the diagnosis and also you are going to answer the questions. Uh, so when he asked you what could be the reason for this disorder, so you must go through the biopsychosocial, psychological, okay, uh, this can be due to uh, by new onset of bipolar disorder or due to recreational drugs or chemical imbalance in the brain, okay. Neurological can be a cause of dementia or physical some sort of dementia, stroke and tumors and head injury and epilepsy. All this can give some sort of picture clear to close to this uh, to many. 
and pay attention if you want to excel we want you to appear that you are distinguished and different from the other candidates we know that the elderly have a problem in their thyroid gland you know the thyroid gland undergoes some sort of atrophy and this atrophy causes the tsh to be increased and when this tsh increased it hyperstimulates some parts of the uh, thyroid gland so the secretions of the thyroid gland are disturbed most probably in the elderly either it is low because of the atrophy which are the, which is an aging process or uh, the hyperstimulation by the tsh tss so they go through mood problems in either way so there could be a possibility that there is an underlying uh, thyroid hormone disturbance it's very common in the elderly okay there could be a medical problem due to behind this manic, uh, medical uh, problem, be mania, which is vitamin B12 deficiency. Okay, so these are some information which will help you to show that you are different from the other candidates who will focus on the mood problem. Okay, now with all other issues in the elderly, which can raise a picture very close to the mania, like thyroid deficiency, vitamin B12 deficiency, uh, frontal lobe de dementia, tumors in the brain. Okay etc okay uh formulation can you formulate for me this station doctor mr brown has a mania that carry risk uh, of not treated all that in background that he don't have medical problem or uh, any substance use he don't use substance. very good very good now regarding the management you must be very organized as i said you will only have around 90 seconds to cover the management plan in the station. And this is challenging if you are not organized in the way or by which you are going to talk about the management. Always start by talking about what are you going to do, Dr. Anas, and where the patient is going to be treated. So definitely the first thing you are going to do is you are going to talk to Mr. X yourself to explain his condition and the management plan and to address his concerns. And bearing in mind the high risk, it will be better for him to stay in the hospital until his mental condition is stable. If he disagrees, we might consider the use of mental health act. Okay? Are with me? So this is the first thing which you should do when you talk about the management in general. What are you going to do and where the patient is going to be treated? Number two, the investigations. So you need to do some investigations to make sure that the patient is fit and to exclude other causes. So you want to do some basic blood tests, which is like liver function test and heart racing and so on. And uh, also it's better to do, uh, Mr. Dunn, he already have done some uh, basic blood tests which didn't show any abnormality. However, it will be helpful to do urine drug screening, heart racing, thyroid functions. So this man already has been referred to you after doing the basic blood test and has been cleared medically. However, the next step in the management needs further investigations. You want to exclude if he is taking any under any recreational drugs. You want to make sure that his heart is fit for the medications which you are going to give him. And also you want to exclude any underlying thyroid dysfunctions and thyroid uh, hormones are not the uh, routine investigations. So the first is step, as we said, what are you going to do with a patient is going to be treated? The next step is to do the investigations. Are you following me, Dr. Anas? Yes. Okay. Any questions so far? Yeah. What? No, it's clear. I, I don't hear. It seems that the connection is not good. Yeah, yeah, I'm following you. Okay, Thank very you. good. The, ne the third step. You must verbalize the sentence which will show that you are a, 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 a practitioner who is going to uh, approach the patient comprehensively. It will be a team which will cover all his needs physically, psychologically, and socially. Okay? And under each heading yes, of the yes. physical and social and psychological headings, you are going to put some sentences. So psychologically, he must be under observation uh, to make sure that the risk is low. And regarding the medications, we start by benzodiazepine. What is the benefit of the benzodiazepines? It will control the behaviors and it will help to, to improve the sleep yes. pattern. Then you must talk about the backbone of the treatment here, which is the mood stabilizer. 
There are different medications which can be used to control the mood like lithium, sodium valproate, or cotyopin. Each one has its own pros and cons. I'll give you a leaf list about them. That said, don't go through depth in depth about these medications. Just make sure that you show the examiner that the backbone here is a mood stabilizer. And if you want to add a cherry on top, talk about the olanzapine and this for done that they are not recommended in the old age, though they can be used as mood stabilizers. Okay? Yes. And this next step, if there is no improvement, you can go, you are going to use uh, two mood stabilizers. Eventually, if still there is no improvement, we can use either clozapine or ECT. And he, this is something, again, which will help to show that you are a clever doctor. You know what is the stepwise and how to manage a patient who has mood problem, uh, a mania, which is difficult to be controlled. So the stepwise approach, uh, giving him a mood stabilizer, no improvement, two mood stabilizers, still there is no mood improvement. You have the choice of either using clozapine or ECT. Okay. Yes. Physically, as we are still in the uh, biopsychosocial approach to help him, we covered the psychological. We are going now to talk about the physical. You will follow him up regarding the vi vital functions and physical conditions. And if there is any physical problems, you will consult the physician. There is no underlying physical problem so far. However, there is a place for the physician consultation if there is any. Now, socially, very important to talk about when you, if you are going to admit a patient, you must talk about his discharge and what it's are the conditions of his discharge. And the conditions of the discharge is very simple. When the condition, the mental condition is stable and the risk is low, he is going to be discharged. You admit the patient because of his mental condition, you must talk about the discharge. When the patient is going to be discharged, when the con mental condition is stable and the risk is low, he is going to be discharged, okay? And after discharge, a nurse will follow him up at home to make sure that he's taking his medications and to, dec and to detect early signs of any relapse. Also, you might set a community to uh, order uh, community treatment order to make sure that he is taking his medications. So this is how you talk about the social part. It is a very important part in the, in the management, which includes what are the conditions which you are which you will discharge him on. Okay, he took his medication, so what? What are the, when are you going to discharge him, okay? According to the stability of the mental state and the low level of risk. And after discharge, what are you going to do? And this will follow him up and you might need to set a community treatment order and finally terminate by saying that you are going to give him leaflets. As you can see, these are very this will be will be always your stepwise approach when you talk about the management but definitely it will change according to the management of the condition but make sure that this will be your stepwise approach in order to cover all this in 90 seconds okay yes again we are going to go through the mark sheet rapidly in doctors your reference is the mark sheet not my notes not any one notes your reference is the mark sheet because this is how the game is played. Okay. First, you have formulated the problem. Good. Number one is going to be scored for you. First, recognize significance of findings and results. You did recognize the significance of findings. Faye does not develop adequate management plan. Did you talk about the combination of two anti uh, two mood stabilizers and the use of clozapine and the use of ECT if there is no improvement? No. So this point is not going to be scored for you. Does not pay sufficient attention to the patient's health. You Did you say that I'm going to talk to Mr. White or Mr. X myself to explain his yeah. condition? Did you say this? Yes. Okay, yes. so this point is going to be scored for you. Does not develop adequate risk management plan. Did you ask me about the risk and set a condition of uh, low risk to discharge the patient? Mm. No. no, so this point is not going to be scored for you. Does not identify appropriate psychological social interventions. Unfortunately, because you did not pay attention to the social interventions, which we have just mentioned, this point also might not be scored for you. It was organized. It was not formalic. Uh, everything regarding your communication skills was good. I don't have any problem. Okay. Again, this is not a pass or fail, doctor. 
is just to help you to understand how you are going to be assessed. For me, you did so good. For me, I felt that it was a good trial attempt. But when it comes down to the mark sheet, it is a totally mm -hmm. different. You know, if if I if I was an examiner without this mark sheet, I would say Anas will pass. But now yeah. with this mark sheet, which is the rule of the game, uh, it is a different mm -hmm. assessment. Thank you so much. I hope that you find it thank helpful. You. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Doctor. Who would like to go next? I can go next. Okay, Dr. Bijal. How are you? So what is your station? Bro? Hypochondriasis. Hypochondriasis. They have two minutes, write down your thoughts, write your notes and your thoughts. So. Uh, what is the name of patient? Yeah, Robin, you can say that my name is Robin. Robin. I'm ready whenever you're ready. Thank you. Uh -huh. Ready? Yes. Okay. One, two, three, four. Hello, Mrs. Robin. My name is Dr. Vijal. I'm one of the doctor working here. Hello, doctor. How are you doing today? Well, um, I'm, I'm fine. I don't want to be rude, but I don't know why am I talking to psychiatrists. I thought that I'm going to talk to a neurologist. We want to do a brain imaging or an MRI. Yeah, so I understand your concern, but you know, uh, as we know that our body and our mind is connected to each other. And it is not uncommon for someone to have some physical symptoms, per se, any bodily symptoms, if they have some kind of stress. Okay, yeah? okay. But I'm wondering if he's not having any physical problem, why is having this severe headache? It has been for a long time going on with him. Yeah, I can say that you're quite worried about your uh, symptoms. Uh, but we we are sure that uh, I I I am here to help you, and I will do uh, by uh, I will do my best to help you. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. why is having these these headaches? Yeah. So uh, you know, uh, as uh, you know, uh, we we have seen that you have been uh, advised a multiple investigation for this, and all investigation came normal. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so uh, what it suggests that you have uh, one condition which we call health anxiety disorder. Have you ever heard about this? No, what is this? Yeah, so in this condition, uh, individuals have uh, serious anxiety about their own illness. Uh, they feel that they might have some serious illness uh, despite the all investigation came normal. Yeah. I see. 
I see, I see. Yeah. So is he faking these symptoms? So actually, no, we are not uh, saying in that way. But as I mentioned earlier, that, you know, due to underlying stress, there might be uh, some bodily symptoms. So uh, this is not a feigning of symptoms per se. And this is usually a common mental health condition. Yeah. I see. What would be could be the reason for this problem? Yeah, so there are no particular one cause behind this. But we can say that, uh, uh, you know, one chemical in our brain, if imbalance in the chemical in the certain area of brain, that might lead to occurrence of this condition. And uh, other cause is that if some individual have some childhood experiences, like, you know, in childhood, if they feel very frequently ill, and, you know, uh, this can be a reason behind this condition. I see, doctor, but, uh, uh, well, he will be better if you allowed uh, an MRI for him. Is it possible? So, uh, it's possible, but, you know, as I mentioned earlier, that despite uh, all investigation came normal, and, uh, you know, uh, after doing this investigation, he feels some uh, relief after doing this investigation, but after that or after some time, he will get again this anxiety that he might have some major illness. So uh, at this point, it, it should not be advisable to do MRI. I see, doctor. So uh, is he going to get better, doctor? Yeah, so, uh, you know, uh, it's very difficult to say at the moment. But, uh, you know, we can uh, we, we have multiple options for treatment. Like we can give some medication or some talking therapy. And with your support, you know, we are hoping that he will get better. Yeah. Are you okay if, if I go ahead with the uh, further uh, management plan? Yeah, no problem. So yeah. well, how, how are you going to help him then? Yeah. So uh, what we can do is we can give him uh, anti antidepressant medication. Uh, you know, this medication will try to keep balance uh, of those chemicals in certain area of brain. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And another thing is uh, what we can do is some talking therapy. This include a cognitive behavior therapy. Have you ever heard about this? No, what is this uh, talking therapy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this, uh, you know, this talking therapy includes some cognition part as well as some behavioral part in which, you know, he has thoughts about, uh, you know, he has some uh, serious illness. So our psychotherapist will address these thoughts and will try to get uh, his uh, positive thought about this. And another thing is that a behavioral part. So what we can do is we can gradually decrease the number of uh, his visiting to uh, uh, to the doctor. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And uh, uh, we need your support as well. Uh, we need that you, you, if you possible, then you could not encourage him to get another meeting for the, for the purpose of any kind of investigation. I see. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, same whether he is taking medication regularly or not. I see. I see, Doctor. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, do you have any questions for me so far? No, thank you. One mm -hmm. minute remaining. Yeah, I understand uh, that uh, you are there for taking care of uh, him. And I will provide you a leaflet about this. And if you have any concern or any query, uh, I would like to ha uh, help help you. How does that sound to you? Okay. Mm, thank you. Have you finished? Okay, great. So how do you feel about what you did? Give me feedback about what you did. Yeah, initially, I think uh, for history taking part, uh, I should explore more about the history taking part. I mean, your understanding about the symptoms and all that. Um, to answer the question about how uh, you get better, you might mention that. Yeah, exactly, Dr. Ayan. The prognostic factors, we hope, yeah. 
Uh, I hope that you give her some feedback. Uh, pay attention to the feedback for colleagues. They are very clever, very, very valuable feedback. So why he is ha he is uh, having uh, the headaches? I asked you this question, and I don't remember quite well. How did you uh, answer this question? Yeah, what did so you say? Uh, basically, I explain about the causes. So, well, I wrote down. So, what what would be the best uh, answer I to say, this question? Yeah, probably I said that uh, you know uh, the body and mind is connected. And uh, it is not uncommon for someone to have uh, some physical symptoms or bodily changes if they have some kind of underlying stress. So when I ask you, is he faking this? Let's go through this. Uh, okay. okay, so again, doctors, don't forget the management. This is all. These are the five steps which you are going to write down in your note when you go to the exam before you go through the station write down these five steps this will help you to have better orientation about your task and what you're going to do okay write down introduction gathering the biopsychosocial explanation formulation management these are the five steps which you are going through which you are going to do or go through when you go into the station to make sure that you pass the station your introduction was good uh, pay attention to the explanation of why am I seeing to a, my seeing a psychiatrist. Just it is a very simple question which you are going to encounter. Actually, a very common question in the past. I understand why you, your query. However, the mind and body, <coughs> mind and body are one unit, and it is common to have physical symptoms because of a psychological problem, particularly if the physical and lab assessment were okay as in the case of your husband, okay? <clears throat> now, why is he having these headaches? He must explain that it is an anxiety disorder in which he misinterprets the minor physical symptoms because of the anxiety. So this is the problem with this uh, man. He misinterprets the, uh, the minor symptoms as serious, uh, uh, serious uh, physical problems. Okay, and he firmly believes that there is an underlying serious medical disorder despite being healthy by the clinical assessment and investigation. So this is how you answer this question. Okay, this is how you explain the problem. What does uh, hypochondriasis mean? Is he faking the symptoms? This is a common question which, question which you will encounter in this station. He genuinely believes that he is having a brain tumor, but this is because of his anxiety, not because of an underlying medical disorder. So this is how he asks her the question. Okay. When he, she will ask you, is he faking these symptoms? No, he genuinely believes that he is having this uh, brain tumor, but this is because of the anxiety, not because of an underlying medical problem. What could be the reason for this problem, which is hypochondriasis? There is no particular reason. This is a typical question for any psychiatric disorder, no particular reason, but there are factors which increase the chance of having health anxiety disorder, like chronic childhood illness, uh, raised in a family which seeks medical services, past hits of psychiatric disorder and chemical imbalance. So this is a typical answer for any health, any psychiatric disorder, except for the uh, chronic childhood illness and uh, family which seeks medical services. This is These are the two points which you are going to add for the hypochondriasis. Otherwise, this is a typical answer. Spasis of psychiatric disorders and chemical imbalance. Will he get better? This is a question for to check your understanding of the prognostic factors. So you don't give a, 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 a an empty uh, a reassurance, okay, if he's going to get better, okay. So we know that there are some factors which will improve the good outcome, like starting the treatment as soon as possible, being cooperative with the management plan, good level of functions before functioning before the illness, the absence of stressors or substance misuse, or past psychiatric history, and the good support. So these are 
the prognostic factors which you should talk about when I ask you, is he going to get better? Unfortunately, most of the candidates answer this question with empty assurance. This is not the aim of this question. A very common question in this station, will he get better if uh, he, she will ask you about the MRI brain. Why this patient should not do an MRI, or, or MRI brain? You must justify it because unnecessary investigations will bring temporary relief. However, it is not recommended because investigations will emphasize the idea that he is sick. All the patients who do the uh, investigation. So this is how you answer this question. Uh, there is temporary relief. However, uh, there are, is a uh, some sort of emphasis there of the idea that he is sick. So we don't need to do it particularly that he doesn't have, he's not suffering from it, okay? Let's see the feedback. No, she did not ask about the risk. Uh, is it okay to share? Okay. Well, is he going to get better? We asked her the question, Gavin, now. After that, she will ask you, how am I going to help him? How are you going to get help him? So you must, be ready to answer this question in a systematized way. Don't jump to the medications and CBT. So first gather the biopsychosocial and risk. We said that you must have a clear plan in your mind. When she asks you, how are you going to help him? You said you, you can answer. So I would like to gather some information before going through how we can help him. Okay, and gather the biopsychological and social information and the risk. Already he is physically cleared, so you are going to get some psychological and social information. Okay, uh, psychological, has he ever been in contact with psychiatric services? Is he type of person who gets easily worried? You want to know if he is, uh, does he have uh, generalized anxiety disorder? How about his mood? Socially, any uh, stressors in his life, any support? And finally, the question which your colleagues has commented that you did not ask about, and yet it is an important question, even in the station of hypochondriasis, which you might ask, what, why should I ask about the, uh, the risk in this station? Because there is a point for the candidates who ask about the risk. There is a point for the candidates who are keen to show that they are safe practitioners. That's why you ask about the risk, to make sure that you will pass the exam. Okay, we are not going to, uh, go through an empty debate, is it important to ask about the risk in the in hypochondriasis? You have a mark sheet which includes a point about the risk, so you must ask about the risk. Okay, you should, so when she asks you how are you going to help her, her him or her uh, uh, talk about the biopsychosocial information and then do your formulation. Having said this, can you formulate for me, Dr. Please formulate. So uh, we can say that uh, from, thank you for all this information. And uh, through this information, it seems to me that uh, he has a uh, health anxiety disorder. And uh, yeah, uh, in, in the, uh, we include our past, his past psychiatric illness, any social stressor, if any kind of, and we can address uh, all those in the formulation. Okay. We're go going to go through again how we are going to formulate rapidly in the seven minutes frame in order to make sure that the point of formulation is going to be scored for us. So there is a formulation uh, uh, clip which I did uh, in my YouTube channel. I hope that you uh, go and watch it. I will share it on my group, on the group also. So again, there is an S bar technique. All what you are going to do in this uh, in formulation, you're just going to mention the situation and the background. Simply, the first line in the situation: what is the main psychological problem? And what is the level of risk? So if this man is suffering from. You can say that Mr. X is having hypochondriasis. This carries low risk actually. Okay, so this is the main psychological problem is having hypochondriasis and there is low risk on himself or well, low risk in general. There is no for, need for admission because the level of risk is the main determinant of the admission. All this in the background that he doesn't have any physical problem. There is no past history of uh, contact with psychiatric cells and there is no underlying uh, 
so social stresses. So this is the second line, okay, the background, the biopsychosocial information. Again, I, it will be difficult to grasp this skill from what I'm doing. It needs some sort of practice in order to understand how you do it. It's not difficult. Definitely you will grasp it and you will master it, but it is a skill. It needs practice. And it is the very first point which you are going to be scored for in the mock sheet. Okay, I'll back again to the my to my notes. <clears throat> so after the formulation, you are going to talk about the management, and again, you will only have around ninety seconds when you talk about the management. You must be very organized in order not to miss the points which are important in the management. So we always say the first thing you do, you are going to talk with the patient and where the patient is going to be treated. What are you going to do and where the patient is going to be treated? Number two, the investigations. Number three, talking about the biopsychosocial approach. And finally, the termination. These are the four steps which you are going to go through whenever you are going to talk the, about the management in all the stations. Very simple and will help you to cover all of the points. So the first thing you want to do is you want to talk with Mr. X yourself to explain the diagnosis and address all his concerns. And where he's going to be treated, he will be treated at home and followed up regularly in the clinic and at home by a nurse. So this is your plan. You're going to talk with him and you are going to follow him up in the clinic and there will be a nurse will, which will follow him. <laughs> Regarding the investigations, he needs to do some blood tests to make sure that he is physically fit for the medications. We know that he is going to take a medication for his condition, SSMIs. Never give a patient a medication without doing the investigations. If he has any heart problems, if he has kidney problems, definitely this will affect your decision regarding the medications. So if your plan includes giving a patient a medication, make sure that you talk about the investigation. And when you talk about the investigations, don't talk in general, we'll do some blood tests. There are not less than 100 or even more uh, blood tests. Uh, you, what blood tests are you going to do for him? Just talk about the routine blood tests, CBC, kidney functions, liver functions, and blood chemistry, okay? So this is, these are the first two steps which you always start with. Now talk about the biopsychosocial approach to make sure that you are going to be a comprehensive physician or comprehensive psychiatrist in assessing the patient and manage them, managing them and under each heading with the physical, psychological and social, make sure that you put some sentences and this will help you to cover the most important points in the management. Regarding the psychological, we say that the backbone here is the talking therapy, particularly the cognitive behavior therapy. It will help him to understand his illness and to interpret the physical symptoms in the right way and to correct the wrong behaviors like frequent investigations. So this is the first thing you talk about, the psychological, because it is the backbone. Then regarding the medications, we know that the main uh, medications here are the antidepressants, which can correct the chemical imbalance behind the anxiety. And finally, talk about the leaflets, termination, that's it. So there is no place here for the social intervention. This is a very simple uh, condition. So talk about the psychological medication, and finally termination. Okay, doctor, yes. any questions? So let's see regarding the mark sheet. And again, doctors, make sure that your reference is the mark sheet. As you can see, the first point here is the uh, formulation. Fortunately, doctor, you did not formulate as far as I remember. Does first recognize significance of findings and results? No, you did. Uh, adequate management plan, unfortunately, I did not feel that you covered it in a good way. You're not talking to me about, before going through the management plan, you want to know some biopsychosocial information and level of risk and so on. And then talk about the medications. You did not do this. You did not talk with your patient. So point number three is not going to be scored for you. Does not pay sufficient attention to the patient's health you. This point, you can simply score it if you, pay, if you pay attention to the very first point which you start your talking about the management plan with. So how do we talk in our plan? We, the first thing we do is that we, we say that we want to explain for the patient his condition. 
what are going to do and where the patient is going to be treated. I will see Mr. X myself, explain his diagnosis and address his concern. When you do this, definitely you will score for yourself point number four. My notes are formulated according to the monk sheet. So uh, when you start talking about the management plan by saying that I will talk, I will talk with Mr. X myself, definitely point number four is going to be scored for you. Adequate risk management plan. If you are not going to do, ask about the risk, definitely this point is not going to be scored for you. The psychological, here there's not much social, but the psychological the CBT, you talked about the CBT. It was not very organized, uh, not formalic, but I think the questioning style and the language was not good. So point number 11, 12, uh, and seven might not be scored for. Again, doctor, this is not a pass or fail here. We don't pass or fail anyone, but just to help you to understand the importance of the mark sheet, okay? And you must understand how to use it and make it your reference whenever you are going to practice. Okay, doctor, thank you so much. So who would like to go next? I, we didn't finish. I think we did only two, two or three stages. Who would like to go next? Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Fasam. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi Yes, I have anorexia. Anorexia, and well, this is one anorexia, of the anorexia. Uh, explanation on it's. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Okay, I have two minutes. I'm ready whenever you are ready, though. Okay. Okay. One, two, three, go. Hello? Um, yeah. I'm Dr. Hamad, a psychiatrist working here. Um, I understand that um, uh, you are having some questions uh, you want to ask me about our patient. May I, how may I address you? You can call me Michelle. Michelle. Okay. How are you, Michelle? Uh, I'm fine, but I want to know what is wrong with Miss, uh, Miss X. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, um, uh, I, I want to know what's your understanding about her situation. Do you know any information about her? Well, I, I, I know that she is not uh, doing fine. She lost a lot of weight. Yeah. And I thought that she is dieting. They said, uh, no, her condition is not dieting. So I want to know what is her problem. Yes, exactly. So, uh, Miss, uh, Miss Michelle, uh, is going through what we're calling eating disorder. Have you uh, heard about it before? No, what is eating disorder? Yeah, eating disorder and exactly in her situation is anorexia nervosa. Okay, and uh, I'll explain it more for you. Okay, um, as as uh, uh, as I saw her on SSR, um, I can see that she was restricting, intentionally restricting uh, and skipping uh, some meals, and she's doing excessive exercise in order 
to intentionally lose weight. Okay. I see. So, uh -huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, this is not a dieting. So it's not it's not dieting. Actually, it's not dieting because this uh, has affected her body and it will cause uh, uh, many uh, hormonal and metabolic problems in her body. And this is a mental mental disorder, uh, actually. I see. Psychological. So is it a common disorder? Uh, it's rare disorder. Uh, it's rare one to two uh, in thousand uh, person can get it. And uh, actually, it's more uh, in the females, 10 times more than males uh, uh, can get it. And it's more in the high socioeconomic classes. I see. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, what are the causes of anorexia, doctor? There is no one cause that we can point at, but many factors. Uh, can lead to having anorexia nervosa, many predisposing factors, as we can say. So, uh, first of all, having family history of uh, anorexia nervosa, like in our case, uh, she has her sister having uh, anorexia nervosa. And uh, this is one cause. Coming from a protective family and uh, overachieving family uh, is also like contributing factors, factor for that. In the childhood, um, having many uh, illnesses while being child, um, going through uh, abuse uh, is also like the disposing factor for that. And right. actually, uh, some personalities, uh, personality traits, like in uh, in Mrs. X, uh, she's perfectionist, and uh, those uh, obsessive or other impulsive traits, uh, they might have uh, eating disorders. I see. Is it a serious disorder? Yeah, actually, it's it's a serious disorder. Uh, if uh, if if not managed, and in case of uh, in case of uh, our, our patient here, uh, it's good that the GP has detected what's been going through uh, through with her, and uh, now we are uh, going to manage her the best way that we can. The early we detect it and uh, the good management we are giving the patient uh, would be the best for him. What are, what are the complications of anorexia? Uh, anorexia, like I told you before, it, it, has, uh, it, it will affect the metabolism and many hormonal changes in the body. In her case now, she's missing her periods. And... Uh, she might, uh, her heart might be affected as there will be uh, electrolyte imbalance. Having low potassium, low phosphate, this might affect her heart and other parts of the body. The kidneys could be affected. Uh, the hormone, the hormonal, uh, they have a high growth hormone and the bones uh, are affected, osteoporosis. And uh, so it's, it's affecting uh, Heart skin, actually, all the part of the body would be affected. And okay. serious complications not properly managed uh, can happen. And this is why uh, uh, we might consider at any time to admit her. Well, well can, you, can you, is she going to get better? Uh, there are many factors that will determine if she's going to get better or not. Uh, one of them, actually, her age, she's uh, she's tw over 20. So if it was recognized uh, before having uh, eating disorder before 15, it would be good. But in her case, it's not. Uh, she has a perfectionist trait. Uh, we need to assess her more to, to know if she's having bulimia or not, which is not in favor of her. She's having family history, and this is um, not in favor of uh, her. Uh, One minute she, remaining. Yeah. Uh, if she was uh, motivated to the treatment and was uh, uh, getting uh, pro, uh, like cooperative with the, the management plan, with the psychological treatment, and uh, she doesn't have any physical problems, uh, and uh, she uh, luckily she doesn't have any comorbidities, this is in favor of her uh, prognosis. I see. How are you going to help her? 
uh, yeah, a team uh, holistic approach uh, will include team uh, starting with the dietitian uh, uh, because we need to uh, uh, to arrange for her diet uh, precisely and uh, uh, very carefully. Uh, psycho psychotherapy is the the backbone and the most important thing. Uh, cognitive behavioral therapy to to uh, work on her. Uh, her thoughts and maladaptive behaviors she's having and uh, the body image. And uh, family therapy have uh, another role in that. And of course, with the follow up with the time, time. How do you feel about what you did? Uh, I missed the structure. Actually, whenever I'm, I'm doing a station, I'm, I became very anxious. And then I ruin yes. all the plans that I, I put in yeah, my mind. It's, the anxiety is not bad as long as you are trying to control it by practicing. So when you do yeah. this station again, you will feel more familiar with the station material and the questions and will be able to uh, grasp the station and your anxiety is less. If you are anxious, simply practice as much as possible. That's it. Yeah. Trying. Okay, so uh, can you give her some feedback? She's clever. She did a very difficult station. Uh, good job. These are your friends. <laughs> okay, so Osadia is also your friend. Okay, so let's see the feedback. So, okay, um, please pay attention to the introduction. Uh, in the beginning, uh, you said that she is having an eating disorder. This is not the best thing. To... Shut up. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Come here, Dara. Okay. okay. Uh, this is not the best uh, answer. You can say that it is a anorexia nervosa, which is an eating disorder. What you did is that she's having an eating disorder. Have you ever heard about this before? This is not how we uh, explain the problem. You say that she's having anorexia nervosa, which is an eating disorder. Have you eating ever heard disorder, this? Yes. Okay. Uh, you talked about the percentage. I think it is different. The information about the percentage, which you talked about, was not accurate. Your explanation was not enough. You did not talk about the disturbed body image. You did not talk about the loss of at least fifteen, at least fifteen percent of the body weight, etc. Doctor, you are the problem. Pay attention to this. I hope that you all pay attention to this. You are talking in a way which you interrupting. So uh, 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 the, the the sentence you are going to consume in the sentence around one to two seconds because of this interrupted way of talking. If you are going to say in the station forty or fifty sentence. This means that at least 50 seconds, if you are going to waste in each sentence one second because of your interrupting way of talking, you are going to lose six, 50 seconds because of this way of talking. And actually, unfortunately, this is what happened. You needed not, let, not more than one minute to finish. You did not have this one minute because, and you lost time because of the way of talking. Pay attention, try to be more fluent, okay? And actually, there is a point in the mark sheet for the language. You were lecturing, I felt you went in a, through a long uh, way of discussing, explaining, and you did not, I felt at one point that you were le lecturing. And you said at any time we're going to admit him, him or her, this is not the best way to talk about the serious not all. You can talk, say that it is not uncommon that her medical condition will deteriorate if the anorexia is not controlled and you might need to admit her. But I'm generally speaking, at any time we'll admit her, this is not the best way to say. Okay. Rushed, yes, yes. Okay, so let's see the... Uh, Anorexia, here it is. So. This is one of the most important stations, and also it is one of the most difficult stations. Your introduction is simple. Pay attention to it, as I've said. Simple rule, introduce yourself, read the role player, and explain why you are talking with him. 
explanation. You are going to start by explaining the this station because the role player has no information, nothing. She does. She she is not her relative. She wants to know more about her condition and the problem of anorexia. So definitely, you are going to start by uh, explaining what is the problem with uh, uh, this lady. What is wrong with Miss X? She has been referred because of the loss of excessive weight after interviewing, seeing that he's suffering from anorexia nervosa and go through the explanation, what is anorexia nervosa? It must be an accurate explanation. Uh, the body weight is on 15% of what below what is expected. The weight loss is self-induced body image. The main core here is body image. And this is very important to, uh, to talk about because it will answer another question, which is very common in this station, which will come to it later on. Changes in menses. So these are the four points which you must talk about when you talk about the uh, what is anorexia, the explanation of the anorexia. Now, is it a common disorder? Pay attention to the statistics. These are from the NHS sources. It is one uh, among uh, 100 women. And for men, it is one of one th among 350 men over the course of their lifetime. And experts advise that it is becoming more common. Okay. The causes of anorexia nervosa, familiar factors, psychological, childhood, and brain chemistry. Familial, having family member who have anorexia. Okay. So you will be asked biopsychosocial. Pay attention to this. Is it a serious disorder? Yes, it is a serious disorder. And pay attention to the uh, statistical figures. 50% will recover. 30% will partly recover. 20% will have a chronic course. And unfortunately, the mortality is up to 5%. And this is a very, very high mortality rate. 5% of the girls who have uh, anorexia nervosa, unfortunately, will pass away. So pay attention to these figures. 50% will recover, 30% will partly recover, 20% will have a chronic course, and unfortunately, five, the mortality is up to 5%. What are the complications of anorexia? You mentioned this. Uh, when she asks here, what, is it a simple dieting? Well, you must answer that it is not a simple dieting because it is it it includes a distorted body image, which will not be controlled by dieting or reaching a particular weight. So everyone, if he diets, suppose that he feels better if he lost about ten kilograms, fifteen kilograms. But for these girls, dieting is not going to sort out the problem. They will always have distorted body image and will continue losing weight. So the distorted body image is not going to be corrected by dieting, okay? This is the core difference. Is she going to get better? You answered this and part, partially answered this. We know that there are factors which favor the good outcome, like the age of onset, absence of family eating disorders, early engagement of the, in the treatment, absence of past history of psychiatric disorder, et cetera. Typical answer, but you are going just to add Two points, the age of onset and absence of family eating disorder. Otherwise, the question is the patient is going to get better is a typical answer. Early engagement in the treatment, absence of process of psychiatric disorders, good functioning, absence of stressors, good family support, etc. Okay. How can you help her? Before going through this, the, the management steps. You must talk about, you must squeeze your formulation because you, this is the point which you are going to this court. So you must say something before going how we in through how we can help her. I would like to highlight the most important points which we focus on in our management. Miss X has anorexia complicated by amnuria and there is considerable risk if she is not managed properly. All this on the backbone or background of no positive of psychiatric disorder or eating disorders. However, we need to know more about her psychological condition and social life. So the first line is talking about the current situation, which includes the main psychological problem and the risk. And the second line is the backbone information, which you know all you need to know. 
in her biopsychosocial domains, biopsychosocial. So we know that she doesn't have any psychiatric disorder. However, we need to know more about her psychological condition and the social life. Now, talking about the management, as we always say, you will only have 90 seconds to talk about the management of this difficult situation. It is not an easy station. You must be very organized. The first thing you do, as we always say, is where the patient is going to be treated and what are you going to do, doctor? I would like to see Ms. X myself to explain the diagnosis and the management plan and to address her concerns. Where the patient is going to be treated, I think really? she should be treated at home and followed up regularly by a nurse. However, if there is if there is any concerns about her safety, the admission in the hospital can be considered. Very important to talk about the need, the possible need for admission to the station if the patient is. Uh, mm -hmm. Are you with me, doctor? Okay. Number two, the investigations. Definitely you need to know to do investigations for her to make sure that she's physically fit, like CVC, liver functions, kidney function, etc. Now regarding the management, how the, the, the third point in the management, you must say that there will be a team who will cover all her needs physically, psychologically. It must verbalize this sentence. There will be a team who will cover all her, all her needs physically, psychologically, and socially. Not to show that you are a cool doctor, because there is a point for the candidates who cover all these yes, things. Okay. Yes. Physically, okay, if there is any underlying physical problem, definitely you will be your liaise with the physician. And under the physical, talk about the supervision of the dietitian, and she must gain around 0.5 to 1 kilogram per week. So this is the physical part. Psychologically, CBT definitely. And you must say, and you must verbalize that the talking therapy can be Victor. lengthy. Well, Victor. And Natasha, I told Victor. Please my, mute your mics. Okay, so physically, we talked about the physical, psychological talking therapy. And say the different types which can be helpful, like CBT, cognitive analytic, and interpersonal. But you must mentioned that it might be a lengthy uh, talking therapy up to 12 months. Socially, the family psychoeducation and the social services is very important to talk about the role of services or social services because if this girl is a student or she is an employer, definitely the social services are going to communicate with her uh, work or her uh, school or uh, faculty to make sure that the duration of her treatment will not affect her education or work. Okay. And finally, terminate the stage. I'll share leaflets about everything. Okay. Let's go through the mark sheet. And as you can see, the first point is the formulation, and Dr. Iman did not form it. So this point might not be scored for you. First, to recognize significance of finding and results. No, you did talk about it does not develop adequate management plan that reflects knowledge of current best practice. Uh, you, you talked about the CBT, didn't you? Yeah, I talked about it, yeah. But at the end, I didn't like, uh, I didn't talk about other types. You did not have time to talk about no, all the I management. Have, so most probably no. this point, it was a matter of time. So most probably this point will not be scored does not pay sufficient attention to the patient's health to you. If you said that I'm going to talk to this patient myself, explain for her the diagnosis and address her concerns. Mm -hmm. The first I point which we talk about, what are you going to do, Dr. Iman? I'm going to talk with the patient, etc. So definitely this point is going to be scored for you. Risk management plan, as you can see, did you, uh, well, you must talk about the risk in this uh, station that if there is any need, as you can see. However, if there are any concerns about her safety, she might be in need for the admission in the hospital. So as you can see, if you follow our plan in, to, in how you talk about the management, the first point will help you to score two points in the mark sheet. 
first point that you are going to show that you are concerned about the patient. I'm going to talk with her, explain the diagnosis and so on. And the admission definitely is going to be considered if there is any uh, concerns about her safety. So we'll score two points in the mark sheet, the point related to the uh, attention to the patient's health and physical view, and the second point, risk management plan. The psychological and social intervention, unfortunately, this point will not be scored for you. It didn't talk about the social interventions. Uh, I felt that it was not very organized. It was not formalic. Your attitude was good. Uh, listening skills, unfortunately, or lecturing at this point might, might not be scored for you. Uh, because of your interrupted way of talking, I felt that you are not fluent, most probably the po two points of language might not be scored for you. Again, doctor, this is not a pass or fail, just to help you to understand how to do the mark sheet. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Very Doctor, thank you. I have just uh, some questions. Yeah. Uh, regarding the prognosis. So um, should I like personalize the prognosis? Uh, the prognosis uh, you can personalize it or you can make it easy for yourself to talk about the prognosis in general. Okay. We know that there are some factors which will have the good outcome, like the age of onset, family history, early engagement in the treatment. Okay, go on through okay. these prognostic factors. Show the examiner that you know the prognostic factors. Okay. okay. Okay, and uh, for the biopsychosocial, uh, if I said holistic approach, uh, it don't will talk not like... about the, the, Don't say big words. They will consider that you're using a, a medical jargon. Yeah. Let's say that we'll, okay. there will be a team who will cover all their needs, physically, psychologically, and socially. Simple language. Okay. Simple. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Who would like to go next? Who would like to go next? Okay, yeah, we finished. Still, we have one, two, three. Still have four pages. Okay, we have finished. Okay, thank you so much. It was a pleasure and privilege. I hope to see all your names in the post list. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Please, doctors, if you are interested in my notes, um, just contact me on the WhatsApp because the PayPal uh, is not working on the website. You can arrange how you can buy it. Thank you so much.